guys, Giuseppe Cagliazzo here from talentsdeletersounds.com. Today I have some good news for both composers and sound designers of cinematic horror music. We have just released a new library based on acoustic instrument string sounds effect. The library is called String Ache. We have recorded a huge deal of violin squeaks, cello stabs, double bass dark tones, bowed effect. And we have transformed all of them in pretty creepy and uh, unsettling cinematic sounds. String Egg features uh, 517 and more samples, plus 14 contact instruments to further manipulate the sounds and create your own effects. In particular, you'll find uh, 300 and more design sounds, plus 270 original source recordings, which are actually the sounds that we have originally recorded from uh, violin, uh, viola, um, cello and double bass. So you can use this sound as a, a construction kit to actually build your uh, completely new sound from scratch. Uh, currently we are running an introductory price deal for a string gig, so you will be able to purchase it for $29 instead of $59 until April the time. So, enough talking for now. Let's have a listen to the sound that you will find in the library. Well, let's say that the goal that we had in our mind when doing this library was to uh, come up with something that at the same time preserved the original uh, organic character of the instruments that we have recorded, but that at the same time sounded sort of uh, weird and mangled. So we have tried to uh, strike a delicate balance between uh, a kind of uh, more uh, classic horror sound, let's say, and something uh, more modern at the same time. Well, say this, uh, let's have a, look, a closer look to the uh, contact interface and let's see what are the controls that are featured in it. The first thing that I would like to highlight is that uh, all the sounds within each contact instrument are divided in uh, three different groups. Um, well, you can have a first visual clue about this organization of the samples just by looking at the virtual keyboard. As you see, all the keys, uh, and so the corresponding sample, are highlighted in three different colors, gray, blue, and violet. So we have these uh, three groups, uh, and the reason of uh, organizing them in this, in this way is to allow an individual control of, the most, of most of the parameters you will find in the interface to have uh, more uh, flexibility, let's say, uh, when you combine them in order to create, as I said initially, your own sound starting from the originals. Well, you can also have a visual clue of this uh, organization of the samples. Uh, probably you'll notice uh, just by looking at the waveform display, probably you have seen whereas when I was playing the samples that they uh, are displayed, the waveform are displayed with a different color according to the group to which the sample belongs. For example, if I play this sample, which belongs actually to the first group, so it's highlighted in gray exactly as the corresponding key on the virtual keyboard. Instead, this one, for example, that belongs to the third group is highlighted in violet exactly like you see on the virtual keyboard. Um, yeah, so let's have a look at the uh, upper part of the, of, the, of the interface. Let's say this higher area here, here that uh, uh, with uh, this sort of uh, dark wood background. Well, here the controls are pretty uh, simple and straightforward. In particular, if we have a look on the left side here, we find three knobs and each one of them control the pitch of one of the groups. So we have the uh, gray knobs, you can see here from this sort of small circle that only affects the, um, the pitch for the gray samples. And same thing also for the blue one and for the uh, violet one. 
And also if we, if we move on the right side, when we find the control of the, uh, of the volume, we find something pretty similar. Uh, we have these three sliders, each one controlling the volume of the uh, three group of samples, and you have uh, these three <laughs> segments, gr gray, blue, and uh, violet, that uh, um, highlight the, uh, the group that corresponds to each one of the controls. So, uh, plain and simple, on this panel you can have uh, uh, individual control of each of the volume of each of the group, regardless of the, actual, uh, the, of the sample that you are currently playing. If we scroll down and we have a look at the central part of the interface, this one with the, with the gray background, we can see there is a huge deal of knobs and controls. We have an EQ, a low pass filter, an high pass filter, but I will get more in detail about this control uh, in a minute. The thing that I would like to highlight is that uh, um, also for each one of these controls you have uh, um the possibility to, to, to the possibility to control them individually for each group of samples and you can do this by navigating these uh, three screens via these three switches for example on layer one here everything that we are going to do in this screen will only affect the gray samples so for example if we uh, apply some low pass filter this will only affect the samples corresponding to the to the gray keys so as you read here, to the sample belonging to the first layer. I see if you want to um, apply, for example, some uh, high pass filter or a different setting of the queue to the layer two, then we have to navigate to the corresponding screen. And the same thing is for layer three as well. Now, one thing that you need to bear in mind is that uh, don't be uh, fooled, let's say, by the color of the, um, of the displayed waveform that represent the last sound that has been played because the screen that we have here does not necessarily correspond to the color that we see on the waveform so whenever you need to um, change the low pass filter or any one of these parameters always um, keep your eye on the layer that is currently selected well say this let's see uh, more in detail the kind of control that we find in each one of these screens just choosing layer one as, in, as an example. Uh, if we see here on the left side, the first thing that we find is uh, a parametric EQ, in particular a solid G EQ, which is, a, as I say, the kind of pretty uh, classic, let's say, kind of uh, equalizer. We have uh, four bands of frequencies, so low frequencies, uh, low mids, high mids and high frequencies. And in the um, second row of uh, knobs, this one here, you can actually control the uh, frequency. And uh, in the upper one, you can control the gain boost corresponding to that frequency. So, as I said, pretty uh, standard kind of EQ, which can be uh, really helpful if you want, for example, to sculpt the sounds, to highlight or uh, cut a frequency and uh, make your sounds from string 8 uh, nicely fit in the mix or when you try to combine them with other sounds. If we move here on the right side we find a low pass filter and high pass filter and the resonance uh, and in particular the knob of the resonance uh, uh, applies for both the LPF and the HPF so that means that if we increase the resonance the resonance will increase for both the low pass filter and the, and the high pass filter as well. Then if we, move, um, if we scroll down another bit, we'll uh, find a uh, volume envelope control. So attack, hold, decay, sustain, and release. And then if we move on the right side, we'll find uh, some, con some uh, controls about the uh, distortion effect, in particular the drive, damping, and saturation. These controls can be pretty useful if you want to uh, let's say heavily alter the original character of the sound and coming up with something uh, very unusual and probably very distant from the original sounds. Um, then in the final part of the interface we find a, a master effect section with the reverb and the delay. In particular clearly these effects uh, affect all the samples regardless of the group to which they belong. And uh, mm, here for the reverb we find uh, control on the sides, color, stereo and damping. 
plus we have this uh, slider that controls the amount of the effect. And for the delay, we have control on the tempo uh, that ranges from, uh, from 64 to 8, and uh, the feedback. And again, a slider that uh, controls the amount of the effect. Well, this is a very uh, quick walkthrough in the functionalities that you will find within the interface. However, now I would like to uh, show to you other uh, presets to give you a further idea of the sounds that you will find in String Ache. For example, this one, Crescendos, which is a kind of sound that is uh, can be very, very important and pretty, uh, let's say, typical when you mm, compose music in the realm of uh, cinematic horror. <laughs> So in this uh, instrument you will find a lot of uh, sort of tension builders effect and uh, as the samples are pretty long you could experiment uh, by changing for example the filter of the distortion effect along the sample to create something uh, new or something with more movement and more uh, excitement. As I said in the beginning of the video it's actually almost 600 sounds so uh, we won't have the time to go through each one of them, but I would like to make sure that uh, you have a clear idea of the kind of sound that you um, that you have to expect from the library. Well, yeah, if you move to this preset, for example, this one is a, a sort um, a pretty a processed uh, version of the original sounds. You can see here the sounds are heavily uh, pitched down. There is also some drive and some distortion so let's listen to what we found in this present <laughs> So as you can hear, if you um, get creative with these effects and you maybe assign these knobs to an external controller, you can have some uh, further control on these pretty long samples and come up with something that uh, is completely different from the original but can work uh, uh, pretty effectively in the um, realm of cinematic composition. Well. Yeah, this is another preset that I would like to show you that is a bit different from the previous one that is because it's based on 
more rhythmic elements. Probably if you are a trailer music fan, you have noticed that uh, um, contemporary trailers tend to feature uh, um, rhythms that seems very resemble to sounds of clocks. And uh, we've tried to get something similar uh, for this library, starting from the original recording of, uh, of the acoustic instrument that I mentioned before. <laughs> Well, these grooves are not tempo synced because uh, uh, being mm, their time signature can be pretty different and uh, I didn't like how they sounded if I tried to process them with, uh, um, uh, with the tempo sync in, my, in, um, in contact. But you can find them pretty useful for creating, for example, the rhythmic bass for a cue or for uh, a trailer track. Well, now I would like to show you actually the sounds of the uh, source recordings that, as I mentioned before, is actually the, um, the original sound of the instrument that we have recorded and we have applied just a very uh, transparent EQ and the noise to have them uh, nice and clean but uh, as close as possible to actually the original instrument sounds. And this can be pretty useful because you can use them as uh, building elements to co completely build from scratch your own uh, string bass <laughs> find uh, uh, three different instruments based entirely on source recording. <laughs> yeah, you know, these uh, very short stabs can be pretty useful to uh, combine them together and come up with something more complex. <laughs> So actually you have uh, plenty of material that you can both use uh, as it is and you can also use it as a, as a building block to go build your own samples. Uh, so it's pretty a lot of material that we could go through but I hope that uh, uh, with this video you had uh, an idea of the kind of sound and the kind of uh, possibility let's say that you have uh, uh, within the contact instrument to um, create your own uh, string based effects. So guys, um, I hope that you have enjoyed the sound, I hope that you enjoyed this video. One very last thing that I would like to say is, the, well, actually two things. The first one is the troubleshooting information. Well, it's very unlikely as uh, all the sounds within the contact instruments have been saved with uh, uh, relative path mode. So um, regardless of where the library is migrated, to which computer is migrated, uh, contact should, be always, should always be able to locate the sample to avoid any kind of uh, missing sample issues. But in the very unlikely case that this happens, uh, 
uh, you can solve the problem by batch resaving. I'm saying this because uh, uh, it may happen. And so in this case, don't panic because there is a very simple workaround that, as I said, is based on the batch resave. Another thing is that uh, maybe someone of you already purchased some of our previous products. And in particular, I'm mentioning uh, Transfer, which is the previous time library that we have released before StringGeek. And uh, in case you are one of the customers of Transfer, don't forget to redeem the code that you have received at the moment of the purchase of Transfer, because this code will entitle you to have a perpetual 10% discount on everything that we have released after Transfer. So this is the first library that we release after Transfer. So you can uh, have a further 10% discount on StringGeek if you are um, if you have purchased uh, transfer in the previous months. So guys, I think that's all. As I said, hope that you had um, some good time <laughs> in listening to the sound and uh, having a look at the interface in StringGeek. And so, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.